This is going to be our second lecture of Module 5. In this lecture, we're going to be taking a look at service general requirements as specified in Article 230. So our objectives for this lesson, we're going to understand the NEC requirements for service installations. We're going to identify the number of services permitted by code and identify the number of service disconnects permitted by code. So our definitions for this lecture, it's going to be a service the conductors and equipment for delivering electric energy from the serving utility to the wiring system of the premises serve. In other words, whatever is in between uh, the utility connection and the system of the property, essentially. And service conductors, the conductors from the service point to the service disconnecting means. So whenever we talk about uh, there's a lot of different terms for all the conductors and parts for a service. Uh, the biggest one, in my opinion, to keep in mind is the service conductors. Uh, if we think about a typical uh, residential uh, meter setup, the service conductors would be everything from the weather head to the meter. Uh, on the secondary of that meter would be your service entrance conductors. And we have different requirements and rules for both of those types of conductors. So Article 230 is going to cover services. Article 230 covers service conductors and equipment. And it's separated into eight parts. Part 1, general. Part 2, overhead service conductors. Part 3, underground service conductors. Part 4, service entrance conductors. Part five, service equipment, general. Part six, service equipment disconnecting means. Part seven, service equipment overcurrent protection. And part eight, services exceeding 1,000 volts. So we're primarily going to be in parts uh, one through five, especially uh, parts one through three are going to be our primary concerns here. Taking a look at our service general requirements, we have quantity and clearances. 230.2A through E specify the number of services permitted for a structure and the circumstance that allow additional services, one service per building unless otherwise permitted. So in other words, unless we have a special rule or exception for this, we're allowed one service entrance per building. Now there are a variety of circumstances that uh, allow you to have more than that, but that is the general uh, rule. 230.9 A through C lists clearances for service conductors over windows, porches, stairs, etc. Basically any type of a dwelling or a property that you can imagine. Uh, when we're talking about overhead service conductors, this is going to give you how far away from that type of item or structure you, those conductors have to be. Uh, kind of coattailing off of that idea, we're going to be taking a look at those clearances or some clearances, 230.24A through E list clearance requirements for overhead service conductors. Part A is going to cover above roofs. Part B is going to be vertical clearances for overhead service conductors. Part C is going to be clearances from building openings. Part D is clearance from swimming pools. And Part E covers clearance from communication wires and cables. We've talked about some of the general, or went over where to find some of the general requirements uh, for service uh, conductors. Now we're going to be taking a look at some of the specific wiring methods. 230.30B lists wiring methods for service conductors installed underground. Uh, so where installed underground, this is essentially what type of wiring methods are permitted for service conductors. So we're permitted to use rigid metal conduit, intermediate metal conduit, uh, PVC, underground service entrance or USE cables and conductors, uh, medium voltage and metal clad cable identified for direct burial, and mineral insulated cable were suitably protected against physical damage and corrosive conditions. Uh, and these requirements for mineral insulated cable, uh, these are kind of going to be based on the environment they're installed in. Obviously, some areas are going to be subject to more damage than others. Taking a look now at our service disconnecting means, we have our quantity, grouping, and the equipment to be connected to the disconnect means. 
230.71 A through B specifies the number of disconnects permitted for services. We have a maximum of six permitted for any service uh, as specified by Part A. In other words, for any given service, we're only allowed a maximum of six di disconnect means for that service. We cannot exceed uh, six. 230.72 A through C lists the grouping and accessibility requirements of the disconnects. Uh, and 230.82 lists the equipment that may be connected to the supply side of the disconnecting means. Uh, I kind of like to think of 230.72 and 230.82 as kind of general ideas about uh, what we have to do and how the service disconnecting means can function uh, in general. And that's going to wrap up this lecture. In our next session, we're going to be taking a look at our final lecture for Module 5 with overcurrent protection requirements.